my friends, this is another situation where I consider myself to be one of the luckiest persons in the world. And why is that? That is because today I have a guest with me from the other side of the pond, from Ireland. John Murray, please introduce yourself and what you do to the audience, please. Hey guys, I'm John Murray and I am a portrait photographer who mixes behavioral sciences and photography together. So if you believe what it says on my LinkedIn, it says that I travel the world teaching people to unconditionally love themselves and their faces. And after that intro, I probably should have said that with an American accent just to pretend that I was in America and I wasn't really in Ireland. But uh, I have a very strange sense of humor. Enjoy the next 20 minutes or so. Great. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you so much. You know, the audience should know that, John, this was meant to happen today because our outfits are color coordinated and we didn't plan on that. So we were determined to make this happen today. Um, and then the audio, the audio is just a little bit sketchy. But again, I know John's going to come through loud and clear. But John, let's step back to what you just said, because I will say when I read your LinkedIn profile, I was super intrigued with what you do. Like, the self-image part of your work. What brought you to that, making that combination with your profession? Um, I like to say I'm a bit of a leaf floating down a river into, a, into the ocean and I kind of do whatever happens. I just go with whatever makes me feel good. Um, but the truth is, there's a whole combination of things. I really struggled with my own self-image as a, as a teenager. I, I fell when I was eight years of age and I knocked my teeth out, both of my teeth. Wow. And my mom, yeah, my, my mother held them back in with milk on a sponge, which is a top medical tip for anybody. Um, it preserved the teeth, it preserved the gums, it got me to hospital. But um, what had to happen is I became a bit of a science project for dentistry students because teeth are not perfused the same way as other bones. They don't have the same blood flow. So they're not supposed to heal, but mine did. Um, and not only did they heal, I had to go to the dental hospital in Dublin every Thursday to be poked at by these dental students. And they gave me a root canal in one tooth. So it went com it completely brown. But at the same time, I had a, a brace across the front of my teeth that looked like wet bread. Okay. Needless to say, as a teenager, that went down well with my peers. Um, but I, that started the, the ball rolling, I suppose, on a lot of negative self-image a lot of me dropping my posture, a lot of me carrying myself like the bullied child. And as I carried myself like that, I got bullied. Um, so yeah, it, it, that was where I was. And then as I got older, as I actually started to take photographs, everybody would say, oh, don't take pictures of me. I look fat and old and ugly and I hate myself in pictures. Mm. And I felt like I was responsible for that. And then when I trained with Peter Hurley in 2014, it was a conversation with Peter about a lady named Umpele Kayla who he, who was essentially Miss Universe at the time. And she said when she saw photographs of herself, I hate my pictures. Mm. Um, Peter explained the way that that had happened in his studio. And I knew it was happening to me too. It was happening to all of us. And I no longer felt like I was responsible for causing that discomfort. I knew that it was coming from an internal thing with people and that we could correct it and we could change it. Um, so it kind of led into where I am now because it was it seemed like a good idea at the time to start telling people you're not okay you just don't look like you in the mirror um, oh my goodness. So yeah. I love that I love that message because we have this internal skepticism that has been really hard to turn off within the past two and a half years it was something that you and I were just discussing in the green room because we were all forced to go on camera right using video conferencing tools what are some techniques John that you can share that you would be willing to share with us on how we attend to that mindset shift right how do we how do we shift that mindset into self-love or what are some things we can tell ourselves I think the issues around that were always there. People didn't like themselves in photographs because the, the fundamentals of the way that works is that we got eyeballs 90 million years ago. And 90 million years ago, we started to use shapes to identify whether we're in danger or not. We look at other squishy things like ourselves to make sure that we're safe. But 200 years ago, the camera was invented. And only 180 years ago, so 20 years after the camera, the mirror was invented, the glass-based mirror. So this is like everybody's on their phones Googling right now. No way. But what happens is that as we're raised, we spend most of our time looking at ourselves in the mirror and you believe you look like that, but you don't because it's back to front. So 
So when you see a photograph of yourself, your brain needs to figure out why you don't look like you. And then what you do is you pick one thing on your face you don't like. It's the same thing in every photograph and it's always there and you blame it on making you feel uncomfortable. Now, oh. Zoom does the exact same thing. When you're looking at yourself in the corner on Zoom, it's back to front. As far as your brain is concerned, not only that, we're uncomfortable. So we have cells in our brain called mirror receptors that make us copy what we see in other people. If they're happy, we're happy with them. If they're sad, we're sad with them. If they're uncomfortable, we feel uncomfortable for them. So what's happening is we're being empathetic towards the person that you're, you see on the screen. But as far as your brain is concerned, that's a different person. You shouldn't be able to see yourself. See, you're feeling uncomfortable because the person is feeling uncomfortable. You're moving in the same way they are because it is you and it's now live. Um, and then you feel really crappy and really, really uncomfortable and bad because you're magnifying then the fact that this whole situation is uncomfortable. That thing is right. on your face. And then what we don't realize as well is that if you're quite close to your camera, what's going to happen is it's going to fish eye out. One of the leading causes of people having rhinoplasty or nose jobs in America is not such a big thing here, but um, the leading cause of it or one of the leading causes of it in the state is actually uh, selfies because the 24 oh. millimeter lens splays out your face and it makes your nose look really big. Your ears disappear off the back of your, uh, off the side of your face and you get a bit of a jawline. But we're kind of compensating and we're getting the jawline, but we're losing uh, the fact that we liked our noses before um, for that because the nose has been elongated and it's been kind of stretched out and made much bigger because it's closer to the lens. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's one of the, that's the kind of long and short of how it happens. Uh, the getting over it is desensitizing yourself and having photographs taken, you know, actual photographs taken, not selfies because, you know, UX designers in the likes of Instagram and stuff like that, they use the mirror thing so they will actually flip or invert the image so that it looks like you in the mirror mm. and they do things to make you have a jawline and to, to make you look thinner because essentially the more time you're on the app the more they make so they don't want to do things that's going to make you feel uncomfortable where you have control and the camera is the right way around for you and it looks like you in the mirror and it makes you look thinner and it does all these things um which is wrong because when you do have your photographs taken by a photographer or by somebody else then for you it is wrong and it's extra wrong you know as opposed to what you normally see when you take selfies um mm. so desensitizing yourself to having your photographs taken is important and then thinking do you know what i am what i am you know comparison is the thief of joy i don't need to be measuring myself against anybody else i don't need to be thinner i don't need to be taller i don't need to be shorter i don't need to be you know healthier looking happier looking whatever i am as i am and once we do that and we start to let go then we do suppose we become we realize that we're already happy we're yeah. already comfortable in our own skin it's yeah. just that what's projected around us for sale reasons is is not ideal and it makes us feel bad for the purpose of selling us more products thank you for sharing all of that i didn't know any of that science behind or technology behind you know social media or the mirror that is just also helpful to understand like why our brain tricks us right and then yeah. we get into this competition and this comparison game because then we compare our image against somebody else and then we get lost in that downward spiral. But it's self-love is an everyday practice. Would you agree? Right? Yeah, completely. Yeah. Um, you know, if you don't love yourself, nobody else will. Mm. You know, because what happens when we don't like ourselves is that we project that onto other people. We go around, I like to say, hurt people hurt people mm. you know we don't realize that we do it but when we're in pain or we're hurting what we're doing is we're restricting ourselves pulling ourselves back you know and there's something i use in slides when i do talks and i'm sure you know about the book the secret it's yes. Rhonda rhymes or Rhonda no, Byrne. Shonda, Rhonda Byrne, yeah Rhonda Shonda Byrne. rhymes is who wrote great she's the those yeah, she's an incredible Madeline writer and producer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Two something great completely people. different yes um I remember somebody asking me a question about that and I equated or, or, or switched it over to the process, the, the physical process. And it comes down to hormones. Every hormone that you, every movement that you make is based on hormone release. If you're happy, you look happy. If you're sad, you look sad. If you're stressed, you look stressed. Because we're releasing certain hormones and that balance of hormones makes our body posture and it makes our face posture and it makes us look the way we feel. Right. If you 
are happy and if you're if you like yourself and you do have you do practice things like self-love and you do kind of accept who you are and your position in the world so self-image is not just about the physical self-image it's about our societal self-image as well how we see ourselves in the world um as opposed to what we think everybody else expects so if you practice that and you're comfortable in your own skin what's going to happen is you're going to have bigger posture you're going to be picking yourself up and walking bigger you know you're going to have smiles on your face your facial posture will go outwards and upwards the same way jubilation when we win we go outwards and upwards a smile goes outwards and upwards two 16 year old girls in a shopping center who haven't seen each other for three minutes go outwards and upwards yeah. so we do yeah. that. so if you're in that position and your body position is like that people are going to see you and people will interact with you better because you're comfortable to be around you're positive to be around not only that you're going to step outside the six inches that surrounds your ankles and you're going to take on challenges and you'll do things that will help you progress in your career, progress in life. If, on the other hand, you're walking around and you have a face on you, like the smell of vinegar, people don't want to deal with that. <laughs> Sorry, that's a very Irish expression. Um, you know, because you're full of stress hormones, you're making yourself smaller, you're not taking calculated risks, you're not doing things in your life that will help you to progress or help you to become, you know, a bigger and better person. Right. Well, then life is just not going to favor you because you've got stress hormones inside. So happy hormones make everybody happy, you know, including the people around you. Your interactions with people are better. Your interactions with yourself are, is better. You know, your interactions with the world is better. And then if you've got bad hormones, it goes the opposite direction. So it's like secret. You're putting it out there, even though you don't know you're putting it out there just by having bigger posture, you know, just by basically having better hormones in your system. And you can do that by just being nicer to people you know little random favors little random acts of kindness little i go through the toll booth when i when i'm driving instead of using the machine so i can say thank you to the person and pay them random strange compliments i was in a starbucks here uh once and i told the girl behind the counter who had a big red plait, her hair was pleated over her shoulder and i told her she looked like a disney princess and everybody <laughs> in the place looked i went oh my god you do and they all kind of smiled, she smiled, and that made her day, which made my day, because of those mirror receptor things that I was talking about before. Right. You know, I make her smile, it's a reward smile, so she does it back to me and I feel happy. Um, so even by those small little things, by interacting with the world better around us and being kinder to the world around us, we get it back in ourselves. I think Gandhi said, so selfish is mankind that we can't do for another without doing for ourselves. And that's just that's that right. empathy. That's right. I love all of that so very much and how we lift ourselves by lifting others. I love that Disney, Disney princess. So I think that's something we can all do when we're in line at the Starbucks, right? Is finding more about what you like about somebody rather than what you don't like. There's always going to be an easy way to make that connection, right? Yeah, yeah. And just talking to people and don't say, like a lot of people here say thanks you know, instead of thank you. But if you say thank you, it's it's more personal and you're saying that and make eye contact with people. I think I put right. a LinkedIn post up last week about eye contact, mm -hmm. you know, because people don't make eye contact anymore. They're on their phones. They're, you go into a store and the tellers behind it, the guys behind the counter are standing there looking at each other talking and they're not making eye contact with the customers anymore. And, right. you know, it was one of the good things about COVID that people had masks on. So you had to make eye contact to communicate. With right. Them. But right. now the masks are off. And everybody's looking at their phones and at their toes again. So I think it's right. important to lift your posture to make sure that you're interacting with the world better. And then to just do things that make people laugh or make people smile or just, you know, you don't have to be switched on and performing, but just do something nice for people around you. And that makes the whole world better. You know, if somebody's trying to get out in the car in front of you, let them out and just smile at them. And then they might do it for the next person instead of cutting them off. You know, right. and it's that little sort of stuff that pays forward. Um, yes. I say probably a thousand times a week. If we do for the good of the village, everybody benefits. It's, oh, a concept from a, it's a concept from a word that we have here that doesn't translate into English it's called mehel, um, which to any Irish people listening, it sounds like you're from the Midlands in Ireland and you're trying to say the word metal uh, because they don't pronounce their T's. Uh, mm. Mehel. Um, so but mehel is a... It's kind of like you have in the Amish communities in the States where everybody comes together when something needs to be done and just does it. So if 
a farmer here and his lambs are lambing and his cows are calving and he doesn't he's too much work on to do it himself everybody else will just come down and help him for free and then when it comes time that something has to happen with their farm or their van or whatever they'll go and everybody will kind of give him his turn to have favor mm. um so it's just the village coming together to do for the good of one but when we do for the good of the village ourselves, everybody benefits. And I try to instill that in my business and I try to instill that in my life and it makes me happy and it makes me do random weird things. But yeah. My life you make me so happy. What what a beautiful, incredible message. And I'll have you know, John, at the end of the podcast, I always do like a top three takeaways. That village statement will absolutely be a top takeaway, if not one for the entire year because it relates to all of us and that feel good for ourselves, for others. What an, an amazing uplifting message that I have from you. And I am so appreciative of you and your time. Um, so with this incredible work that you get to do and these presentations that you speak to, do you have a favorite piece of clothing or accessory, John, that makes you feel that incredible feeling, confident perhaps? This hoodie, actually, I really like this hoodie. Um, <laughs> Great answer. The hoodie. Yeah. Why? It makes yeah. people look at me. I don't know. I bought it in a place called Kerry on the west coast of Ireland in a surf shop. Um, I kayak. I'm a sea kayaker, and I like and I love anything to do with the sea. I don't even have, think it has anything to do with the sea on it. Tug twenty four. Um, but no, I just saw it. I wanted to buy it, and I wear it a lot. I wear it in the studio. Um, probably a really inappropriate day to wear it today because it's it's hot. It's probably in the 80s, probably in the in the states. You know, you go by Fahrenheit, we go by new money uh, in Celsius. Yeah. So yeah, it's 22 degrees here, which is God knows what in the states. I'm melting because it's heavy, and I was. <laughs> but the weather in Ireland changes, so we get all four seasons in one day. It was raining earlier on. It was freezing cold earlier on. So. Unless you walk around in your nude with a polar bear strapped to your back, you just don't know what you're going to get in Ireland. You when just it comes to don't the know. <laughs> but I'll be I snowing love... in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but I love your answer because you reach for it. It makes you feel good. It makes you happy. It has a great memory. So that's a great answer. Um, well, rather than keep you stifled in that car any longer, I love that you've spent time with me today with everybody. Your message is just so beautiful, power, powerful, all these great things. But if someone wanted to continue the conversation with you um, or just reach out to you, where's the best place for them to find you? Well, it's not to be in the hedge outside my house waiting on me. That's just creepy. Um... <laughs> That's just creepy. <laughs> um... If you're in Ireland, you can, you can find me on South William Street, probably sitting outside Grogan's having a point. But um, if you're not in Ireland and you would like to check me out, you can go on to johnmurrayheadshots.com and there's click-through links there for all of my social media platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook, Google. Um, they're my clients. Um, and look, on my Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, um, and there's one that's not there is Oxygen Social. It's a new social media platform. Uh, that are essentially going to be paying the users to use the oxygen uh, platform um, instead of all the profits staying in the in the company. They get ten percent, and then the rest of it shared out through Bitcoin to the um, to the users. Excellent. And it's all stuff like this, you're sharing positive messages and things like that, and learning about yourself and learning about the world. So Oxygen Social, um, O X Y G E A N, and it's an app, and you can go and get it. And there's millions of users all over the world already using it. And uh, some of them are like NFL football players and basketball players and things like that. So a lot of really cool people. Excellent. I it. will put, I love that. Thank you so much. I'll put the link in the show notes, John, to make it easy for everyone to reach out to you. I thank you so much for your time, for your incredibly positive message. I know we're going to touch people today when they listen. So thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for having me on. Yes, of course.